Welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Wednesday of the month, which means it's time for Kathy Hester's Vegan Kitchen. But before I introduce her, I want to thank everyone for pre-ordering my new book, Sweet Indulgence, over 150 gluten-free vegan dessert recipes sweetened naturally with fruit. The link below is if you want to pre-order. It really does help us out when you pre-order our books. And now I have worked with a local bookstore. You can actually get a signed copy. So if you order on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the other places it's sold, Target, Walmart, Bookshop, etc., you'll get the book. But I worked with a place that I can actually do signed copies now. The link is right below in the show notes. And if you tune in on Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, April 5th, 2024, to the Real Truth About Health 17-day conference, I'm going to be doing a two-hour cooking demo, making 15 recipes from this book. So thank mm. you so much. And here's Kathy with hot sauce, magic, and mustard. Hey, Kathy, maybe you'll make a recipe sometime on your channel. I would love to make one of your recipes. That would be awesome. Thank you. I'd appreciate yeah. that. I'm getting you a copy from the publisher. They're, they're, the real copies aren't copies. You've probably know this. Like they're called advanced reader copies. Yeah. ARCs. They're like not perfect. Hey, but I can also, always get your virtual copy. So thank you. You've written probably like 17 books. Just 10, just 10. Just, oh my God, this is my, <laughs> this is my fourth and it's taken me like almost 70 years. It is, people realize, people are like, oh, you should write a book. You should open a restaurant. Do it. It's really hard. It, well, a restaurant too. I mean, and I'm not saying it's only a young person's game, but if you're going to be in the kitchen, that's a lot of hard work. That's all I got to say. I worked but, in a restaurant. So that's the last thing I want to do is open a restaurant or a food delivery service. It's hard. It it is really hard, and I'm really grateful for all of you people out there who feed me at those lovely vegan, whole food, plant based restaurants that I get to go to. But I was talking to Chef AJ because I'm always like, "What will I do this month?" And it's always hard to know. So sometimes I like to try and find out what's missing, what's hard for those of you, especially those of you who are SOS or sofa free, just to buy at the store that other people take for granted. Kind of like Worcestershire sauce, right? Sometimes that you have to really read the label. Some store brands are accidentally vegan and some aren't. However, if you don't if you're not okay with salt and sugar, that cuts out a lot of even vegan condiments that you can get. So what Chef AJ said was mustard and sriracha. We're not making sriracha and I'll I'll go into that for a minute, but we're going to make a hot sauce and you can both, uh, we're going to make a spicy ground mustard. And actually I can let you guys see kind of, so oh, Cheryl moved the camera. So I'm not used to, so this is a little dry. So I think I'm probably going to make the recipe a little wetter. What I'm going to do to this is just add probably a little bit of water, or extra vinegar. That's up to your taste. Then I have a couple of these. Look at, doesn't this just look like childhood mustard on your whatever that was in the bun? Oh my God, or, the, yeah, the ballpark mustard, I think they call it, right? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And I just use like some old jars that I have. These are some older yogurt jars. You could put it in a mason jar. And this is my hot sauce. And this was in a little bottle that I had saved. And um, it's, if you smell it, which I wish there was smell a vision, it's spicy. It's got a little bit of garlic and just a little bit of just kind of sweetness. It's very simple. In fact, this only has four ingredients. The reason we're not calling it sriracha is what you do is you take these peppers, you blend them up and you ferment them for several days in salt which kind of defeats the purpose of a salt-free hot sauce. So because we're removing that fermentation process, I'm just calling this hot sauce. <laughs> so, but it can be very similar in flavor. Also, if you want to kind of add in that fermented flavor, you could put a little bit of lactic acid in there. There's vegan lactic acid that you could use. Um, 
Chef AJ, are there any salt-free pickles or salt-free sauerkraut? I don't think there is. No, I have not seen it personally. And I used to make my own sauerkraut back in the day, salt-free. It's so labor intensive. I have not seen it yet. If there may exist, I'll okay. Google it, but I, and I have seen it. And my worry is a lot of times when products are salt-free, they make them sugar-free, not so much by not putting sugar in, but by putting like fake sugars in, which I don't like. Like Splenda. Yeah, yeah I that, definitely- gross. I will Google though, if, if such a product exists. Because the other thing you could do, and maybe those of you who aren't salt-free, maybe this is a better way to put it. A, you can put salt in this if you want, just do it to taste. Um, you're not going to want to taste a lot of hot sauce. So I probably would start with like a teaspoon, though it's fine without. You could also put a little pickle juice or sauerkraut juice when we do the vinegar blending process. So the, we're going to go ahead and start with this. This is about, I think it's about half a pound of red jalapenos or Fresno chilies. And I got these at H Mart and I cut off the tops. I'm leaving in the seeds because I want it to be spicy. If you don't want it to be as spicy, cut them open. Use gloves when you're working with spicy peppers. Cut them up, take the seeds and the ribs out. The ribs actually contain a lot of the stuff that makes it spicy. And here, and I'll tell you what else we've got in here. Again, getting used to everything being, our counter is very big. We're gonna put about two teaspoons of garlic. The reason I'm not using fresh garlic, Chef AJ, I don't know about you, but my garlic has decided it's spring. So it's ready to plant and not ready to eat. And then I've got two medjool dates, oh, three medjool dates. Oops, was I forgot, Kathy, how could I forget? But if you do 2000 shows, I did have a, a person that has a company, Rejuvenative Foods, and they do make four flavors of salt-free sauerkraut, but they're the oh. is really, really expensive because it had to be shipped cold and it's no longer in Whole Foods. So there is one commercial brand, but I'm not so far able to find a salt-free pickle. If you guys know a commercially available one, let me know. Okay, awesome. So we're going to add a half a cup of water because we want our Instant Pot to come up to pressure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you could add more water if you don't want your sauce quite as thick as this is, right? So we could make it thinner. This is a pretty thick sauce. And then I'm just going to put the lid on. And we're going to pressure cook that for about five minutes, which is why I'm starting. Now, the only other ingredient, once that's cooked, is we're going to blend it up with some vinegar. It's going to be spicy. So that, I think of this as kind of a base sauce. And if you don't, if you don't have an H Mart, you can't find Fresno or red jalapenos. Maybe you don't have access to, to a Latin market or you want a milder sauce, get the really big jalapeno peppers, which are like, people are having trouble finding spicy jalapeno peppers. And I got some really big ones from H Mart and I was a little scared because I was making some Thai food in Kathy's cooking club last weekend and they are super mild. So you could still have these flavors and maybe put it on your oil-free refried beans or your bowls and things like that. It, so Cheryl will not be using this. I will be making her a, hal a mild jalapeno version that she's going to be able to use, if that makes sense. Also, we made... SOS free Thai curry paste from scratch in my class this past weekend and made coconut free Thai curries. So everything is possible all the time, you guys. That's amazing. Cause those things I, you haven't been, I haven't been able to find commercially. You can't. And, and the thing is, is if you have an immersion blender in the cup that comes with it, that's really the only equipment you need or a big mortar, mortar and pestle, but my wrists aren't good enough to do that. Um, and it just blends up really easily with some easy ingredients and you can freeze it. So you can make a whole, enough for like six months to a year all at once if you wanted to freeze it and be done. Any questions yet about the first hot sauce stuff? If you don't have an Instant Pot, you could do this on the stove. I'm just softening and cooking it. This is just easy and I don't have to pay attention to it. 
Yeah, as, as Truth is pointing out that uh, uh, Ross Sheffian, was it Ross Sheffian or was it uh, someone else? I, I, I think there was another person that did it, made a, a salt-free kimchi on the show. And it's completely Ooh. possible, but then you have to do it yourself. Hey, Kathy, you know, I've known you a long time. And, and you know, you always were able to create SOS-free recipes, even if you personally weren't eating that way. But did you ever think like back then, oh, one day I'm going to be eating like this? <laughs> <laughs> With the, rest of those, with the rest of those crazy people oh it you know I do eat some salt but I don't I it's funny because when I talk to SOS people I'm like well you know I eat some salt but I then every too. every human being I know who comes over to my house they don't even taste my food anymore they salt it first which lets me know how low salt I've been cooking if that makes sense yeah. Like usually with stews, soups, chilies, I salt after because you can salt per serving. But if it's a sauce, sometimes I will add a little bit of salt. However, if you're making your food SOS and maybe the rest of your family isn't, just remind them to put a little bit of extra, you know, re remember you might need to salt this and, and live your, live your best life. So let's talk, actually, let's, let's get some of this in here and we'll talk about what this is. This is yellow mustard powder from a white mustard seed. Even though it's, a, it's ground mustard, white is a little bit um, less spicy. And, and mustard seeds are pretty spicy. So all of these mustards are going to be spicier. Here, let's, there we go. You see my, my little witchy notes over here with my Halloween notepad. <laughs> I, I, uh, so we're going to, we're going to start cooking it with the vinegar and you'll see a lot of recipes don't do that. That should help you make it milder. So we've got a half a cup of, um, vinegar. We've got three quarters of a cup of water. And then we're going to do three quarters of a cup of dry mustard powder and I'm not going to level this off or worry too much about just how exact close enough is good for you I'm going to use a half cup and a quarter cup measurement whereas normally I would just do the half cup and you know live large <laughs> And this is the one that takes a little bit of time. I'm going to turn this on. We're going to bring it up to a boil. And then we're going to let it simmer until it really starts to thicken. So it's really, see how liquidy it is? And it's going to continue to thicken as we take it off. Let's, yeah, let's come back a little bit trying to straighten this up for you guys. It's crooked for me. Now with yellow mustard, there's two other, three other things we're gonna add. We're gonna add some regular paprika, some turmeric and some garlic powder. The turmeric helps it, see how much ye more yellow this one is than what's in the pan right now. So it's more about color. And we're going to do a half teaspoon of turmeric. We're going to do a half teaspoon of garlic powder. And this could be granulated garlic. I'm down to garlic powder now. I was filling up all my spice jars and making a list of backups I need to order because I order the like couple of cups and this could be smoked paprika if you want to make yourself a smoky mustard you could it, you could add in dill you could add in so many different flavors here and the stone ground mustard is really easy so we're we'll be doing that while things are cooking and so all of these so for this one, we're just using this mustard powder. And so again, it's yellow, but it comes from white mustard seeds. And these are, we're gonna use some black mustard seeds, which are spicier. And then here, let me get a, let's get a little bowl or something where you can 
can see some of these yellow mustard seeds. And actually, how many mustard seeds am I going to need for the other one? I'll just measure them out. Two tablespoons. And maybe we'll even switch the amount. So whole mustard seeds you can get. Um, I got this on Amazon. I get a lot of Frontier Co-op spices. And when I say get my backup spices, I usually buy pounds. Um, but I go through it quite often. This is one I got at the Indian market. Okay, we've got the mustard is boiling. So see how it's come to a little bit of a boil. And see how it looks so much more like mustard now than it did a few minutes ago. I didn't realize you had to cook mustard. I thought maybe you just mixed like water and mustard powder together and that was it. You can, but do you know the spicy Chinese mustard that you get at the Chinese store restaurant? Do you remember that? I do. It's really spicy, right? And that's what it's like when you mix the mustard powder and water together. The cooking, I think, helps tone it down a little bit. And cooking it with the vinegar helps tone it down some, too. And uh, I made a different one a different way. And it was too spicy for us to eat. So we're going to let this keep cooking for a little bit. And while everybody's doing their cooking excitement, turn that up a little bit. I'm going to partially grind some of these mustard seeds that we're going to use in our stone ground mustard. And I think I'm going to switch it. I think I'm going to do a quarter cup of yellow mustard and less brown and see what happens. I'll give you the, I'm just thinking that rest, the stone ground mustard is really spicy. So let's see if there's much of a difference when I do a quarter cup of the yellow and two tablespoons of the black instead of vice versa. And we'll have two and I can test it and tell you. So this is just my, my Ninja spice grinder attachment. You can use a coffee grinder. I would not use a, a coffee grinder that you currently grind coffee in because it's going to taste like mustard and it's going to be spicy. So you're probably not going to like that very much. But I'm going to pause because <laughs> I don't want them to grind into a powder. Let's see if that's the mustard seeds escaped. Okay. Where do they get that saying, have faith the size of a mustard seed? Oh, I don't know. I've but heard it, they, that. look, there are tiny and they are all over my counter. Somehow it got in the grooves. Here we go. I'll move it over here. And then let's get. The one thing I didn't think about was something to mix this in. I will use this one. More Halloween extravaganza from Kathy's uh, collection. Okay, and for this one, and I'm going to kind of stir the, the other mustard every once in a while. We've got this, and for the stone ground, we want to do some turmeric in there too. We're going to do a half a cup of water, a half a cup of dried mustard. So we're kind of making like a little mustardy base. You know, it's funny because they do sell salt-free mustards, just not yellow. They sell salt-free Dijon. They sell salt-free stone ground, but I've never seen salt-free regular yellow mustard. And maybe it's because they cook it. You know, maybe, I don't know. All right, so said that. Let me get a half a cup of water in here. We'll whisk that together and get our spices in. Jeff AJ, this could be a record in how fast I get done today. Nice. Do you have, 
Do you have exciting plans if we're done early? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, very exciting. <laughs> so I'm going to put a, um, a teaspoon of turmeric in here, mostly. I have to go to the Indian market and get some more turmeric. There we go. I got out what I could. And you could leave the turmeric out too. Again, the turmeric is just going to, I didn't put turmeric in this one. It's just for the color. And so I'm just whisking that powder together. It's kind of like what you were saying. Can you just make it? You can. If I taste it, it's oh. really spicy. It reminds me of Asian mustard, like yeah, the that, sauce. You that is spicy in a Chinese restaurant. Hey, so Tia says, are the brown mustard seeds much stronger or hotter than the yellow mustard seeds? I, be I believe so. Hopefully I haven't gotten that confused. <laughs> the white mustard seeds, I know for a fact here, I'll pull the soup and kind of, while we're doing this, I'm just still kind of whisking this and see how it's thickened a lot, but it's not quite thick enough for my store-bought mustard. So that's why I'm just letting it reduce. So even though Chef AJ, and I know you don't love to make condiments from scratch I really wanted to do this because it's really simple and this isn't something you're going to do every week probably you might do this once a month you, you could do it while while you're cooking rice or something mm -hmm. okay all right and then all right we're going to do three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and that's the vinegar I used um, in the other. And you could use white vinegar. What I wouldn't do is use something like balsamic. I just think it's too expensive for a condiment like this that you're not really going to enjoy it. <laughs> but that could just be me being cheap. I want to put my balsamics like on salads and bowls and things that I can taste them or in sparkling water. Sometimes I'll just put like a little half teaspoon, teaspoon in a big cup of sparkling water. And that's awesome too. You could add some date puree or um, some date syrup, coconut sugar, whatever you wanted in here. I, coconut sugar, I would do maybe in the heated one because it's, date sugar doesn't really melt very well here we go and see look it's really starting to come up smoother but i think we can still go just a little bit longer and then all we have to do is add in our crushed mustard seeds and this time i think i did less so We'll see if I need to add more in here because I had done half a recipe, but I think I like this one better. This one's nice and more spreadable. But I'm going to go ahead and do a little more mustard seeds, I think. So let's do that one more time. User error in having two recipes written down two ways. Do you ever do that, Chef AJ? I my, I forget to even write stuff down and then I make something good and then I can't make it again. So I'm going to add, I'm going to crush up another quarter because I was, yesterday when I was testing, I was trying to make smaller amounts. And actually, you know what? Can add a little bit of this and just a little more brown mustard. See, this is why when you guys um, in the <laughs> in the show notes, there should be a place where you can sign up to get the recipes. This is why you don't get them till tomorrow because I make changes <laughs> every time I make something. Sometimes, okay, we're just gonna grind these up a little. Yeah. And you can 
leave it as seedy, as whole and seedy as you want. There we go. It was too thin. My first one was too thick. Who's this guy? Actually, I think my other mustard is good. So I'm just using a spatula. So to make a spicy mustard is easy, but it's going to be really spicy. <laughs> so just know that. And if it soaks up too much of this water or you, you just want it thinner, I'm going to put in the recipe too. You can add more apple cider vinegar. You can add more water too if you wanted to. But I think that looks pretty good. Oops, here we go. How do you figure out how to do these things, Kathy? I try to research a bunch and then I test a bunch of things. Um, I really do try to do my my due diligence as far as looking at, I probably looked at 20 different recipes and read some information about mustard seeds. So to me, it's like, it's not hard, but I know other people don't necessarily want to put the time in it that I would put in it. And so I did three tablespoons. I think I'm going to add another tablespoon or two of vinegar in here. Sometimes I did read, I'm going to put two more in. The vinegar, as it sits, can mellow the mustard seed some. Um, but, you know, you just kind of have to see what works with your taste. And I think sometimes it depends on the mustards. Like when I made, I made mustards in one of my classes too. And I didn't like, I had used the brown mustard seed and just ground it into powder. And it was unbearably spicy, like unbearably. But what would be awesome is to take either of these mustards, puree it with some dates, mix it maybe with some aquafaba and make like um, a faux honey mustard dressing. And so if you think of these, even the spicy ones. Yeah, I like this better with more mustard. It's still got a kick at the end, though. I tell you that. And let's look at what I've decided is thick enough mustard. So you can kind of get a spoon. So see how that's kind of, it's going to thicken up a little bit more as it cools too. So if you can kind of see, it's a little bit thicker. It's not, I don't want it to be a thick paste that it stays on. But you can see how much thicker and you can see from it's reduced by about half and it's still warm and it'll get a little more firm up a little more like this as it cools. If it's not firm enough or thick enough for you as after it cools, you could cook it a little bit longer. And any questions about mustard before we move over to the hot sauce? Let me see if we can use this blender. I think all this will fit in the big blender. Oh, um, Stacy says, I downloaded the recipes, but they are just spice blends. Are the recipes for the sauces from today? Oh, that's probably my mistake. You shouldn't. Well, there's two different links you signed up for. If you signed up through the link that says get the recipes from today, you will get them tomorrow. And I can check, let me check real quick and see if it, if it went over correctly. I'm going to get my computer, which is just on the other side of the counter. While she's getting her computer, I'll tell you <laughs> in the next couple of days at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Thursday, we have the Q&A with Dr. Jessica Grant. She's a plant-based dermatologist. She is awesome. Friday, we have Plant Fueled with Dr. Nikki Davis. She's making smashed chickpea boats, lettuce boats. That's it. 
So here's a question. It's uh, it's more of a medical one, but we'll give it a stab if anybody in the chat knows. Anyone have a good idea for relieving chronic heartburn, asked Sarah. We had a show the other day about that on Monday at two, and the lady that had it said cornflakes. That's what she was eating to relieve her really? heartburn. Um, things that other doctors have said on the show, raising your bed so that, uh, you know, when you're sleeping, putting blocks under your bed, making sure your diet's oil-free and unprocessed. Uh, if not, maybe see a, a GI doctor. There's a lot of plant-based GI doctors for some reason. They, a lot of them go into that specialty, maybe read Dr. Will B's book. If we want to have it less spicy, would we use a mixture of white and yellow seeds? That would that would be best. Yeah, and add more vinegar. Cooking it helps a little bit, also letting it sit a little bit. So a little more vinegar, white and yellow, like don't use black seeds and cooking it. And it looks like the workflow is working. I see that like a, a handful of people have signed up. It could be because you, it could be that you're on a, some other thing that you got the spice blends, you should also have an email for me going, hey, it's almost here. <laughs> and if you don't, you can email me at kathyhester at gmail.com and we'll get that sorted out for you. But everyone who signs up for it through that link will get it for sure. Absolutely. And I'll have any, um, any naughtiness removed from that <laughs> by the time, maybe in like half an hour. And sorry about any inconvenience. So we're gonna finish up with, so any other mustard questions before I even go on? I don't see any mustard questions. Okay, excellent. Oh, is there any sodium in the mustard powder? Asks Lori. There should not be. And Sarah, you're watching on Instagram, so you can't really see the chat. But if you can, hop on over to YouTube because a lot of people are giving good suggestions, a lot of great ones. Don't eat three hours before bed. Eat smaller portions. Uh, pickle juice. So many suggestions. And what I would say is with ground mustard, if you, I think you could go some places and get like Asian mustard powder, something that might have things in it, which I've never seen. But if you go to the Indian market or order it off of Amazon, it's just ground mustard seed. Just like if you got cumin seed, it's ground cumin seed, or that's what it should be. So hopefully that helps. All right, let me make some space. And I'm just trying to get all the water off the lid. And then I think all of this is going to fit in this Beast blender. And you guys, I don't have an affiliate link or anything for the Beast, but I got it at Costco. And they're $67 at Costco now. And it blends um, almost as high as the Vitamix does. It's got 1,000 watts, which is really high for a small blender. And they come with three different containers. This is the largest one. And so it's easy to do things like sauces. And I grind spices in it too. I find it works sometimes as far as grinding it finely better than my Ninja Spice Grinder. So like, for instance, these are the other two containers. And the reason I'm telling you guys about it it's on clearance at Costco, so they're not going to get them anymore. It's only like $69.97, and I paid $120 for mine. So, and I love this little jar. Okay. And it's probably overkill with the big jar. We're adding in a half a, t half a cup of apple cider vinegar. And again, with any of these, you could use white vinegar. You probably could use rice vinegar. And for this too, we could add, this is the plain version. We could put lime zest, different citrus zest. We could put herbs in there. Um, there's so much stuff you could do. <laughs> I 
I know it's always, I'm always blending and it's always boring during the blending time. That blender almost looks like a lamp. I know it's kind of cool. I feel like it's groovy. Yeah. What kind of blender it is? Ask Kathy. It's the beast. Candy, excuse me, Candy. The beast. Here, and I'll see if I, can you see the, oh, it's heavy. It says beast on the bottom. Um, and it's got a little thing on the top. Again, try, if you have it at Costco, and I will be honest, I don't buy a backup of a lot of appliances, but I have gone through three Ninja blenders. And so this one's doing so well, I went ahead and bought a backup one for 70 bucks. I'm going to unpack it, like really do a, a proper unboxing so that other people maybe can get it. I've never seen that at Costco. They definitely have it at ours. You can get it on Amazon and things, but it's more expensive. It's like, I think when I first saw it, it was like $150. And at Costco, you get extra containers. And they have even like little lids that go on these so you can store them in the fridge. And they have some lids with handles, which I will hopefully never need. But some of you may. <laughs> um, but see the beautiful color. Sorry, I have so many things on my screen. You can kind of see it in here. You can see it from here. And it's just really pretty. Now, the other thing is in some, you, making some condiments without salt, like let's say pickles or sauerkraut, like we're talking about, sometimes that can be problematic or it's hard to find because um, it doesn't preserve the product. It doesn't extend the shelf life. However, vinegar extends the shelf life. So... And I've got to stop doing that. <laughs> it's really spicy. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's fine. It's a, <laughs> I, you know what? Every time I bring out the jalapeno powder, I cough on it. But um, also, I wasn't sure about how spicy these peppers were. So yesterday, I cut it and I cut a little piece with no cedar or, or rib. And I just barely touched it to my tongue. If it's super hot, that could be really, it could hurt. But it was, it didn't kill me. I didn't cry. My eyes didn't water. That's how I knew about how spicy these were. I do the same thing when I'm trying to decide if it's a mild jalapeno. Don't just pop a piece of hot pepper you don't know in your mouth, unless mm. you like that kind of thing. Mm. So it has just a little bit of sweetness from the date. It's not super sweet. It's definitely spicy from all those seeds and stuff. Um, I can take medium heat. So I'm not crying, but this is more medium high. This isn't ghost pepper level, but this is, if you like it spicy, if you wanted it less spicy, you could either, there are a few things you could do. You could add more dates. You could also, and if you didn't want to use dates, I know there are a couple of people who, just aren't don't feel comfortable having dates is you could use canned pears you could use applesauce right it's just gonna it's gonna lower how long it can keep in the fridge that is all the more things you add like that however everything we're doing can be frozen so if you're one person everybody else in your household eats mustard with salt you could freeze it in little ice cube trays and just pull out what you need for the week. Same thing with hot sauce. You could do something like that. And that way, also, you're not making it every single day. I think one of the things that's a hurdle for people in making their own sauces and condiments and things like that, dry mixes, is that people think that it's going to be hard or take a really long time or it's something they have to just add to their everyday cooking. But this would be something you would do maybe quarterly. Like this is probably enough of spicy mustard for us for the year or more. So I'll probably gift some of this. And that's another thing. Everything we're making today, great birthday gifts, great Christmas gifts. If you're trying to bring it to someone who does eat salt, you could add salt to theirs. 
Um, with the mustard, I was thinking especially either of these mustards would be great if you chopped up some fresh dill. And I want you guys to see how thick the mustard has gotten just sitting as it's cooling too. So see, see how much thicker it is now. You can see the swirls. So it's like regular real mustard. It almost looks like a cheese sauce. It does. <laughs> if I left it in this pan, eventually Cheryl would stick her finger in it. And that would be really sad for her. Um, but also from cooking. Here, I'm going to taste this for you. It's still got some spice to it. But it's not as spicy as when I tasted just the cold water and the and the mustard powder mixed together to me and this if I, let me taste the one that's been in the fridge overnight too and see if it, how much it mellowed this one tastes just like regular old jar mustard so it's going to mellow out a little bit in the fridge too for sure this tastes just like store-bought without salt that's the only thing I taste different. And even with this yellow mustard, we could go ahead and, and put in chopped fresh herbs, chopped dried herbs, like you could put dill, you could put tarragon, you can make a tarragon mustard sauce. That would work with this too. You could add more garlic. You could leave out the garlic in any of these. Um, you could add onion instead. With the hot sauce, adding some fruit would be great. So you could actually add in, I think, pineapple to sweeten and give it a little bit of bite. Cilantro would, some cilantro and pineapple would be really good in this. Trying to think of other, you know, you can make like a Thai sweet chili sauce. We were talking about that. And I blended this till everything pureed. So you could blend it where everything isn't pureed. So it's more of like a chili garlic sauce. So where you pulsed instead of blended it solid, you could use a little, little bit less liquid possibly if you want it thicker. And then add in pureed dates, date puree, pureed pear, um, any of that. And you could kind of make a sofas free Thai chili sauce. I think that would work well. Have you done anything like that, Chef AJ? Not if I could buy it. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'm going to win you over. <laughs> well, come, come, to, come to the conference on July 7th. Come early and make me make me stuff. Hey, Kathy, um, I, there's a uh, comment from Love Lemons and Limes. If this is a great idea for those of us um, who are limited in buying sodium-free condiments. And then there's a question from Sid. Was the jar of your blender glass or plastic? It is plastic. So these are plastic jars. They're really thick and they have some ridges on the outside, but some thicker. It's like every other one on the inside, which is what keeps it swirling to blend so well. I know that's not ideal, but my Vitamix is also plastic. So I don't feel like that's a big trade off. Um, yeah. Nice. So that would be a downside. So what else? So you guys in the comments, you should tell me other sauces you want or other sauces you're having trouble finding and why. So if you're like, I'm salt free or I don't do, I only use X as a sweetener. The more information you give me, the more it helps me. And over on my blog, healthyslowcooking.com, you might find some more yummy recipes that are perfect for you. This week I did a live and actually we're calling it witchin sauce. And so I made two witchin sauces. I made kind of a plain one and I made this amazing cilantro jalapeno one. No nuts. It, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's, wow. it's awesome. Yeah. Well, have you ever thought of like trying to recreate the five mother sauces that they always teach in French culinary school, SOS free and vegan? You know, you've talked to me about that before. So I will, I'll put that I think, on I, my I, list. I forget what they are. Is it hollandaise, bernays? Let me, let me see if I, can, I, you know, I'm on a trivia team. I should really know some of this information, you know? 
Well, and I bet some of it, I'm sure I've done a couple of them, but not on purpose. So okay, it would be really are. cool. Hollandaise, okay. tomate, which is tomato, to bechamel. I don't know what Espanol and Velote are, sauce are. So uh, these were identified by Auguste Escoffier. So we know tomato, hollandaise, and bechamel, but what is espagnole and velute? That so is... the bechamel I've done, I think I've done a hollandaise too, but I should double check. I haven't, I haven't called it as such, but like, I think my creamy sauce, I think okay, it is on Okay, velote sauce healthy. is a savory sauce made from a roux and a light stock. So to me, it just looks kind of like a yellow sauce. But I don't know what the other so one is. It's like I gravy. Know. It's gravy. And I have I have gravy mixes. Nice. Uh, and then the espagnole sauce, I probably is a basic brown sauce. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'll go look at those. I've definitely done tomatoes. We did tomato sauce here. Sure. Actually, we, we did, did tomatoes, super salsa. cheaty. Yeah. Super cheaty with just cans. And this was really no harder. The only thing you really had to do was grind up some seeds and slice some peppers. And honestly, if you really didn't want to slice the peppers, if your skin's really sensitive, you could put them in whole and just maybe cook it a couple other minutes, a couple extra minutes. I'm so excited that I can now find the salt-free Rotel with the chili. Uh, it's not chilies. What is it? Yeah, with the green chilies. Green chilies. They have them at Walmart. I couldn't find them in any of the stores, but they have them at Walmart. That's awesome. And so it's kind of fun for me too. Like when you ask me for some of this stuff, then sometimes I find condiments are, that I didn't know about. Like you told me Costco tomato paste was salt free yeah. and I didn't realize it and I hadn't read the label. But when I was in stores and looking at labels, I was finding that it had salt in it. It does? <clears throat> I found some, I thought. Let me go. Do Let I have any... I well, I don't want to leave any the other at the same time as you, but I'm going to go check the Costco brand when you get back. Oh, no, the Costco brand doesn't have any. Oh, good. good, that, good. that actually I have right here. So <laughs> I can TS show is that. Saying, TS is, 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 is asking for salt-free pickles. TS, they do it at True North. Maybe I can get Chef Bravo on again to do it because that they do do the salt-free pickles there and the salt-free sauerkraut. It, it, it's all doable. It's just, do we want to do it ourselves? Why can't somebody just make it? No salt free for the in your Walmart, huh? That's the only place I've been able to find it. But TS on Amazon, it's a it's available. It's like a dollar a can, so I don't order it by itself. But if I'm already ordering something, I might just add a few cans to my order because it's a dollar. Yeah, and it's gonna last forever, so you could order a case. Like sometimes, if there's stuff I like on Amazon, I'll order it by the case and just store it. Becky's I have a big pantry. <laughs> he says, for those who can tolerate more caloric density, homemade tortilla chips. Becky, super easy. I know I've done a video about it. I just cut them in eighths and put them at the air fryer for five minutes at 420, 420, 325. And they are perfect. And I know I have a video somewhere there. And uh, she, Becky's not found anything that will substitute for Frank's hot sauce. I don't think we have any Frank's hot sauce. I have Texas Pete and I have Tabasco. Um, one thing that I do often, I'll put this on the on the list too, is it's probably going to be a base of this, pretty much just like this. It might be a different pepper, like Tabasco yeah. uses Tabasco peppers, and then it could be more of something else. So. What I would do if if I had some is I would taste it and taste this one and see what the difference is. It's probably a lighter, more it's a lighter, more watery sauce. This is a little bit thick. So it probably has more vinegar and or water. It might have some other ingredients and spices as well. But look at the label. Sometimes they'll just say spices. Also, you can Google. And see if you can find, like the copycat recipes can be hit or miss. And that's why if I'm looking for something, and I'll see if somebody else has done it. And I'll look a whole bunch of different places and see what's common and what's not. And what I like best is to have something to taste. And I didn't have the bitchin' sauce to taste. So I just kind of made my own way. 
but it's it's not that hard at all. Any other questions or any other things you guys like to use mustard for? What do I use mustard for? I'm trying to think. Uh, on burgers, you know, plant burgers. Cheryl or likes to put it on, on like just, um, we'll take a baked potato and we'll cut it in like big chunks and air fry it. And then she likes to dip that into mustard. So she loves mustard on her potatoes. I like mustard on sweet potato fries, not on regular fries. Regular fries, I like barbecue sauce, but I like them on sweet potato fries. Sid on Instagram is saying, where can we find the recipe? So I know that Instagram has a tendency, they log on and they're off like in two seconds because these this is a long form show. So Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook watchers, we appreciate you watching, but realize this is a YouTube show we, show we multi-stream. So Instagram doesn't allow clickable links anyway. So you have to go to YouTube. There's a show notes. Everything's clickable. You click there, you get the recipes and that's uh, where it's all happening. Yeah. Plant-based Reuben sandwich. That's where one person uses mustard and they dip pretzels mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, pretzels, soft pretzels and mustard. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I do love a soft pretzel. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. Next month is May. Yay. So you're going to be on before Mother's Day. You're going to, I think you might be on before Cinco de Mayo. Let me check when you're the first Wednesday. <laughs> I yeah, think so. Yes. I'm going to be launching a new Ninja Creamy book in May, near the end of May, though. So do you think May is too early or do you think we should do or do you have room for me to do another Ninja Creamy something? And I'll early? always make room for you. You're going to be on Wednesday, May 2nd, which is National Day of Prayer. And today you used mustard seeds. And that, <laughs> and so that is, that is before Check. Thursday. It's before Cinco de Mayo and it's before Memorial Day barbecues. So Anything you want to do is okay, okay. bye. That you sounds great. If somebody oh, yeah. has a request, you can leave it in the comments. Yep. And then I'll talk to you and maybe we can figure out a date for Ninja Creamy Extravaganza. Oh boy, that'll be fun. Mona says Mona, she uses mustard with balsamic vinegar on roasted Brussels sprouts. Yep, that's fantastic, mm. especially in the air fryer. And let's see, Catherine uses it as salad dressing. Yeah, mustard is mm. very good. Well, it's, it packs a lot of flavor with very few calories, very few, you know, it's like, even if you thought you wanted to, you can't just eat a tablespoon of mustard, right? It adds so much flavor with just a little bit. And same thing, I feel like with hot sauce, you know, you're not going to, if it's spicy, you're probably not going to drench a half a cup on there, but it's so nice to have some little bursts of flavor as you're eating through a bowl. Mm. Jill saying she wishes there was something like that tasted like sesame oil that wasn't oil, you know? The, excuse me. And I'm, I'm coughing you guys because it's pollen apocalypse where I live. So forgive me. I'm, I'm not sick or anything. Um, you can get like a, a toasted sesame paste that's supposed to be really delightful. So if you can eat sesame seeds, ground up tahini or that roasted toasted sesame paste is supposed to be good. I haven't had the toasted sesame paste, but it's on my list to get next time I'm at the Asian market. I don't, do you, do you know of anything that's not at, like sprinkling sesame seeds on top is also a possibility. Yeah. I've never seen that. You know, and and uh, what I hear from a lot of people is there are people that just have trouble with nutritional yeast. There's just some people that it doesn't agree with, and they would love the flavor without the yeast if it's possible. Like for cheese sauces, you know, it's umami. That's what people want is umami. Well, and what you can do, and I'm working on, uh, I'll work probably on two different kinds of umami blends: one with nutritional yeast, one without, but. If you use things like um, mushroom powder, tomato powder, ancho chili powder, which is not spicy, those bring those really good complex umami notes. And you could make a delicious creamy sauce with that. You could use a little lactic acid. And uh, the vegan lactic acid I use is Druid's Grove. It's made with non-GMO beets. 
So even I know lactic makes you think it's milk, but it's not from milk, this vegan lactic acid. <laughs> and that would give you a little bit of the fermentation flavor to add into that layer. So I think if somebody wanted to make a nutritional yeast free cheese sauce, you could like go to healthyslowcooking.com, look at my oat queso, take out the, the spices and the nutritional yeast and add that in. And I think that would be about as close as you might be able to get. And it'd still be a delicious creamy sauce over like zoodles or on top of, um, you know, air fried tortilla chips. It, it, it wouldn't be a miss. It just may not taste as much like cheese. So I Googled toasted sesame paste. They do have it on Amazon. It almost sounds like the Asian version of tahini. Yes. And know. you can make that at home too. You can make tahini or, to but this is why having something like a small um, blender, like the max fill is here. So that gives me, I can make a smaller amount. If I made this much amount of tahini, that is going to go bad before I eat it. But um, all you have to do is just grind it together. Just grind it like you would peanut butter. Wow. Very cool. Thanks, Kathy. This was fun. It's always fun to hang out with you. Yeah. yeah. Aren't you glad the bundle's over? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's sad, but I'm still recovering a little bit from the bundle. How about I, I you? I've never been this tired in my life on, on this bundle. Six shows a day for 10 days. Not doing that next year. Note to self. But it, it, the mm -hmm. thing is, is the people are so awesome in the bundle. I mean, I wish we could spread it out the whole year, you know? It's true. And, you know, every year I make new, new plant-based friends in the bundle doing lives because I didn't do as many as you did. I just did 32. But 32 just, is just. plenty. For me, <laughs> well, when you think that some people that do podcasts do one a week, they're doing 50. We did as many in a 10 days that some people do in a year. It was a lot of work, but it was fun. It was very rewarding. And hopefully people are enjoying the bundle. I keep forgetting to look at the, I really want to do the course that was in the bundle, the food photography course. I keep forgetting to pull that up. Oh, and yeah, the Chef Yen's and I love raw Chef Yen. And actually she's coming to the U.S. Did you know that in the summer? Uh, what, what part of the U.S.? All of it? Well, I think, and I don't know if she wants to be telling her business all over the web, but well, I think I remember, she's going to go. I, I remember her texting me, but I'm not sure she's coming to my town. Well, she's going to see Lissa. <gasps> oh. And then she's supposed to come here. And that's why I haven't told you exactly about July yet. We're trying to figure out when she's coming here. Oh, fun. Yeah. Maybe she'll come to the conference with you. That would be really cool. Ooh, I'll mention that to her because that would be really fun. We could all go and hang out because like, I just want to go where you are and eat at all the great restaurants again. Yeah, those are, those are, there. there's at least five that we can get SOS free. So <laughs> nice. All right. Well, thanks so much. Oh, well, thank you guys. And I hope everyone is like getting through the weather. Those of you in the South, although I hear of the pollen is as far as Maine, people are seeing, they walk out their doors and everything's yellow. Here's a tip. When I went out to do errands, I wore my old cloth mask from the pandemic and it worked awesome on the pollen. So if you haven't thrown yours away, you got to use for it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kathy. Say hi to Cheryl. I will. Bye, everybody. Take care. Thanks, everyone, for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time for plant-based dermatologist Jessica Krant asking, asking, not asking your questions, 